Okay, welcome to the June 18th, 2018 meeting of the Pacifica Planning Commission. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kraske. Present. Commissioner Niblin. Here. Commissioner Rubenstein. Present. Chair Campbell. Here. Vice Chair Clifford. Present. Commissioner Stedging. Present. And Commissioner Gordon is absent. Thank you. Uh, salute to the flag. Commissioner Stegnick, please. Thank you, Commissioner Stegnick. <clears throat> All right, on to administrative business. Uh, we're going to approve the order of agenda. Okay, Commissioner Clifford. I move to approve the order of agenda. Commissioner Nebelin. Second. We've had a vote. I mean, we've had a uh, motion. Please vote. And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Now on to approval of the minutes for June 4th, 2018 meeting. Um, and Commissioner Clifford. Uh, I move to approve the minutes of the G um, June 4th, 2018 meeting. Commissioner Rubenstein, was that you? Sorry. Uh, can be. Oh, <laughs> maybe it was Stegnick, sorry. Okay, you're three, I'll get this. All right, we've had a motion, a second. <coughs> uh, second the motion. Okay, and that's passed. On to designation of liaison to the city council meeting. I don't see any. Oh, and we had one no vote. Yeah, we had a uh, uh, error in the um, error in the minutes. I wanted to correct. Oh, sorry. That's right. Didn't see you when you no put it on. Well, let's redo that. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner Stegnick. On uh, page fourteen, there's a. Uh, the last word recurring should be occurring prevent this project from occurring recurring should be prevent this project from occurring all right i will go with uh i will continue to make my motion okay uh, with the change mentioned thank you i've had a motion anyone wants to second that Stegnick. Second. All right. We've got a motion and a second. Please vote. All right. And that passes. On to oral communications. Uh, this is the portion of the agenda available to the public to address the Planning Commission on any issue within the subject matter jurisdiction of the, of the Commission that is not on the agenda tonight. And the time allowed for any speaker would be three minutes. And the way that you would do that would be to fill out a card at the back of the room. I don't see any cards up here, so we're going to move on to consent items, which there are none. So now we're moving on to continued public hearings. First one would be for a specific plan for the construction of a three-story, 3,643 square foot single family residence on a 5,618 square foot vacant lot at 327 Beaumont Boulevard. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Senior Planner Christian Murdoch. Uh, this is the item that the Planning Commission considered at its last meeting. The applicant, um, we had set an aggressive timeline for the continuance in hopes of allowing the applicant to continue on with the project. Uh, the applicant has indicated that he needs additional time to respond to the various items uh, identified by the Commission uh, as warranting further analysis and discussion. And so uh, staff recommends continuing the item to the Planning Commission's meeting of July 16th, 2018. Okay. Um Commissioner Neblin. Uh, I'm ready to make a motion to continue. Okay, we've had a motion. Anyone want to make a second? I second that. Wait, uh, Commissioner Kraske, is that you? Yeah. Okay, motion and, motion and a second, please motion vote. Motion and second. Okay, uh, that is now con continued to our regular meeting of July 16th, 2018. On to the second public hearing. Coastal development permit for the construction of a two-story, 3,819 square foot single family dwelling on a 12,498 square foot vacant lot on the north side of Olympian Way, approximately 1,150 feet west of the intersection of Grand Avenue. Recommended action here is CEQA Class 3 categorical exemption. 
and to approve as conditioned. Staff report, please. Um, good evening, contract planner Ranu Agarwal. Uh, the project before you is the proposed construction of a 3,819 square feet, two-story single uh, family residence with a three-car garage and a driveway on a 12,498 square foot vacant lot. Uh, the lot is located on the northern side of Olympian Way in the Peter Point neighborhood and <clears throat> the site has approximately 35% slope downhill uh, from the street. Uh, the project itself proposes retaining walls around the building to minimize grading. Uh, and improvements in Olympian Way included, including street widening in front of the subject property to address hazardous circulation patterns in the area, and a parking bay for guests parking for the proposed residents are also required as a condition of approval. The project is, up, is consistent with the applicable general plan designation of low density residential. It meets the density standards which allow for an average lot size of 4,840 to 14,520 square foot per unit. It is zoned single family residential with a coastal zone combining district overlay and the project requires a coastal development permit. The coastal development permit is incumbent uh, upon planning commission making two findings. One, that the proposed development is in conformity with the city's certified local coastal program. And the second one, that uh, where the coastal development permit is issued for any development between the nearest public road and shoreline, the development is in conformity with the public recreational policies of Chapter 3 of Co California Coastal Act. Uh, with regards to the first uh, Finding the city's certified local coastal program includes a local coastal land use plan, which contains the coastal act policies which are used to further the uh, coastal planning activity in the city. <laughs> the project is consistent with the applicable coastal act policies which are described in the staff report. Of note, it does not interfere, interfere with public's right of, uh, right of access to the sea. It will not impact scenic coastal areas as it is in a substantially developed neighborhood. It is consistent with the densities in the vicinity and is within the maximum height limit established for single family residential zoning. So it would blend with its surrounding development. With regards to the second finding, it does not apply in this case as there are two streets, Kent Road and Blackburn Terrace, which are located between the shoreline and the project site. Um, the project also proposes removal of a large monorail pine uh, which is approximately 36.2 inches in diameter, 24 inches above the natural grade. It is located to the rear of the building footprint, kind of in a central portion of the site. Um, in the city, with uh, a trees which have a circumference of 15 inches or more, which is approximately 16 inch diameter or more, measured 24 inches above the grade are heritage trees. And the monorail pine on the property is thus a heritage tree and their authorization is subject to certain criteria, which as applicable to the project relate to the condition of the tree with respect to disease, general health, uh, its danger of falling proximity to structure uh, and ability to host plants which are parasitic to another tree, uh, the economically viable use of property, whether it is possible with the preservation of the tree, um, how it would affect the site topography and good forestry practice. The uh, project applicant submitted an arborist report which uh, analyzed the tree on the property and came with certain conclusions. So the conclusions were that although the tree is in fair condition, it is uh, susceptible to a pitch canker disease um, because the fungal pathogen which causes this disease is within the area and has caused dieback um, uh, related to this pathogen in other monorail pines. Uh, it is at an elevated risk of uh, top and limb failure because it's been pruned in the past and it's top heavy. Uh, and uh, that is a concern because of its proximity to the proposed residence in case it were to uh, fall over. Uh, with regards to economic viability of uh, the property, if the tree were to be preserved, the proposed building has been so located to meet the front setbacks and to stay within the height limits of um, uh, the zoning designation. 
The tree is in somewhat of a centralized portion of a steeply sloping lot, and if uh, the building were to avoid the tree and its drip line, the project would be confined entirely to the eastern half of the, of the site and be, in staff assessment, be reduced by approximately 50% in its size on a site which is already quite limited because of the steep slopes on it. Um, the project's engineer did not identify any adverse impact to stability of the site due to the removal of the tree. And good forestry practices would also suggest that the removal of this tree is appropriate to reduce transmission of the fungal pathogen which can cause the disease, pitch canker, and to protect public safety as it has an elevated risk of falling. So in, in balance, staff recommends authorizing the removal of the Mondry pine on the site and all approval of the project uh, with, the, um, uh, with a recommendation for deletion of the condition of approval too, which requires that the retaining wall is in the front set by be no higher than three feet when they are measured from the lower side. Um, subsequent to the publication of this report, uh, the applicant had consulted with staff and uh, in that discussion, um, in staff assessment, uh, addressing the impact of visibility of the retaining walls through landscaping in the side yard would be a better option. So that concludes staff presentation. Uh, thank you very much and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Uh, questions for staff? Commissioner Clifford. Uh, I see that Van is at the back, and I actually had an engineering question for him if he's available. Or is it, no, it's not Van. Van was. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> good, good evening, Commissioner Raymond Guinness, Senior Civil Engineer. Good evening, Raymond. <clears throat> uh, my my question revolves around the uh, retaining walls that are proposed for in the right of way and the widening of that, uh, that road out there. Uh, do you have any idea at this point in time how deep the piers are for that are going to have to be? And uh, also, what is, is there any kind of general plan in terms of the type of equipment that's going to be needed there on a very narrow road? Uh, I, I, I'm not, f uh, do not have the uh, design of the retaining wall in front of me, maybe the applicant uh, can address that here. Uh, uh, the design has not been submitted to us. Okay, and in terms of, uh, 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 is there any kind of general uh, plan or uh, attack mode for when you're working in such a narrow confined space within the right of way? Uh, no, uh, we, we leave that up to the applicant and uh, we'll, we will review when the submit for building permit. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions for staff? Commissioner Stegnick. I, I have a question just on the uh, recommendation for the removal of the tree. Um, <clears throat> I have to admit, I, I don't completely understand the commission's duty to protect heritage trees, so I'm just gonna walk you through uh, the statement here. You're recommending that we remove the uh, Monterey Prime because of uh, potential to transmit pitch canter disease, correct? Uh, the arborist, uh, uh, project arborist concluded <coughs> that uh, there was pathogen that uh, causes pitch canter in the area and the tree itself is in fair condition, but because of the presence of the pathogen in the area, it could be infected and cause the disease. But the tree is not infected. But we're recommending we remove it to prevent transmission of pitch canter, correct? Uh, that's one of the criteria that uh, is being considered. It's not the exclusive or the primary criteria. Um, the ordinance does not require all of the criteria to be met, but it mentions that these are considerations that should be evaluated by the commission. And so uh, it's staff's recommendation that on balance, including consideration of the uh, proximity of the pathogen to this tree, that that uh, is a consideration that recommends and warrants removal of the tree at the site. And this is consistent with what we've historically done on these trees, correct? Uh, I'm not sure that, uh, I don't know how many of the cases that we have for heritage tree removal are caused by uh, parasites. Oftentimes uh, it's 
various forms of decline, typically the tree itself being infected. I don't know how many instances uh, where we've considered nearby infestations. Got it. Well, I fully stipulate to your expertise on, on these trees. It just, uh, from a common sense standpoint, it doesn't, if a population is dying from a disease, it doesn't make sense to remove a survivor to uh, survive the population. That's all I'm, do you understand that argument? Uh, absolutely. Um, sort of Thank cutting you. off your nose to spite your face. Uh. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Commissioner Rubenstein. Um, in these cases where we're removing a heritage tree, are there conditions for the applicant to plant another tree, either on the site or in some way mitigate that loss? Um, we do have a condition where they are required to uh, do a replacement of one tree, and that would be part of the final landscape plan that comes in uh, at the building permit stage and would have to be approved prior to building permit issuance. But there's no uh, fee in lieu of planting a tree on the site, for example, to plant trees elsewhere? I uh, a payment of a fee in lieu of replanting, um, you know, after removal of a heritage tree is an option. Uh, it's not an option that staff recommends uh, in most cases. It's very difficult to value a tree. And then uh, we're also responsible for accounting for and using a fee. And so if there's any feasibility for replanting on a site, it's, it's almost always staff's recommendation to do that. Okay. Have we done that in this case yet? Require a replanting? Yeah. Yes, there is a condition of approval requiring replanting of one tree um, of, a, of a species and in a location uh, subject to the planning director's approval. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Neblin. Yeah, just a couple of follow-up questions on that. Is, is it a one-for-one one, uh, tree replacement that we're talking about? Uh, that is what is proposed currently by staff. The heritage tree ordinance does not specify a replacement ratio. Some other ratio uh, may prove to be um, justifiable in the commission's opinion. Okay, so if we were to think maybe a, a two for one might make more sense given the you know, survivability issues, and, and is that something that is within the commission's discretion? It is. I think other considerations may warrant that as well. You know, how do you rep replace one massive heritage tree that's fully matured with right. one immature tree? Um, I don't think that that's an equivalent offset in terms of greenery and aesthetic impact, so that could serve as another basis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Murdoch. That was actually my following question. Is, uh, did the conditions of approval, and I probably should have seen it myself, uh, uh, stipulate a particular box uh, size for uh, the replacement tree, 24 inch, 36, 40? They do not. Uh, the commission could specify if it's so desired. We'd prefer to leave it uh, more general so that we could consult with the city's arborist uh, to make a recommendation. Uh, in prior conversations, he um, understands the desirability of more mature, larger box sizes. Um, however, they don't often uh, adapt as well and survive as well. And so there's a trade-off there, um, but we'd prefer to rely on his ex expertise if possible. Okay, makes sense, thank you. Commissioner Kraske. Uh, yes, I was, um, it's my understanding that the topography of the site is fairly steep, 35% grade. Um, I was just curious on how um, it was determined that removal of the tree would not have an adverse impact on the stability of the slope? How is that determined specifically? It, it is uh, to do with the fact that they are going to have engineered retaining walls and the footings itself of the, uh, the structure that would uh, uh, go towards tight stability. This okay. one, uh, removal of this one tree is uh, not going to impact site stability because there would be other engineered solutions on the site. Okay, would it impact any surrounding neighbors at all? Uh, the arborist opinion is In terms is of the cumulative kind of effect on the, on the hillside? Uh, the removal of the tree? Yeah. If it were to stay because of the fact that this has an elevated risk mm -hmm. uh, for uh, failure, then if it were to fall over, then it could impact the site neighbors. Okay, so th the risk is more on if the tree fell rather than the um, stability of the, the soil when it, if it was removed. Yes, that's our understanding. Okay. All right, thanks. Commissioner Clifford. Well, while we're talking about trees, can you tell me how many other trees on the site were already removed because they weren't heritage trees and were in the footprint? I, we I I don't think we have a count on that. The city does not um, track or monitor removal of non-heritage trees. The applicant perhaps could speak to <coughs> the uh, site preparation or cleanup work that may have been performed. Okay, thank you very much. 
Mr. Stegnick. I don't want to make too big a deal out of this because I know Half Moon, I mean, you know, Home Depot sells thousands of things, thousands of these Monterey Pines at Christmas every year for Christmas trees. Um, I just had a, a general question. I'm, a, I'm assuming that we would not want the replacement tree to be a Monterey pine, thus it provide the exact same circumstances that r resulted in the removing of this original tree. Is that correct? Uh, I, think, I think it's the opinion of the city arborist that Monterey pines are not um, trees that are suitable for uh, this particular location, this climate, and this geography. Um, so uh, it would be my guess that he would not recommend that as the species to the planning director. Excellent. So he would probably do that on other projects in Pedro Point coming forth to say, yeah, we really don't like that tree around here, kind of. Uh, well, uh, it's not always that the city arborist is involved in um, this type of situation. Uh, not every project requires a removal of the heritage tree, and so um, I'm not sure if I could generalize to that extent. Got it. And, and again, I, I know there's also a Santa's Tree Farm down in Half Moon Bay that sells an awful lot of Monterey pines, and uh, it's it's not a tree no one's ever seen before or lays golden eggs or anything. So I was just curious. Thanks. Commissioner Rubenstein. Yeah, one more comment on the tree. Um, has staff received any uh, public comment uh, opposing the removal of the tree? Uh, or, no. Okay. Okay, I don't see any more questions for staff. So at this point, if the applicant wants to come up, you have 10 minutes to present your project. Good evening, my name is Brian Brinkman. I am uh, the applicant uh, for the owner on the project. First, I'd like to thank you guys, uh, as always tonight, for your time, and to thank the planning department for their work in reviewing the plans and working with us and uh, preparing the staff report. Uh, as you've seen from the plans and uh, possibly visiting the site, the, the parcel has a few existing conditions and constraints that uh, dictate certain design aspects of developing the property. Um, it has a, a fairly steep downhill slope away from uh, Olympian Way. The existing street um, is constructed on the s opposite, on the southern portion of Olympian Way, um, and it's narrower than the city's uh, standards preclude, so we need to, to widen it towards the, uh, the top of the down, the down slope. Um, and additionally, uh, since the street is, is low, or the pavement is located on the southern side, um, the existing front property line of the subject parcel varies from about 18 feet to over 23 feet away from the pavement. Uh, so, you know, when we're at the front property line of the property, we're already well below the, uh, the street level, the existing street level. So, um, starting with the street, due to its location, the street must be widened towards the parcel, like I said, over um, the downslope, requiring some fill and retaining walls. I know you had a, a question in regards to the retaining walls there. Um, at the ex further extent of the road that we need to add, um, we're only talking about four feet of fill, so it's not extensive retaining walls in, in that sense. Um, we are proposing to take the spoils from the grading from where the house pad is to backfill the front yard area to create a more level connected space with the house and the street. Um, I'll get into that, to that a little bit, but so there will be more extensive retaining walls on site rather than in the, the, the right of way. Um, as for the house, we located it um, as close to the property lane up to the 15 foot minimum front setback for the house. And we've also utilized the uh, allowance in the Pacifica Zoning Code to reduce the garage setback to 10 feet, um, again, due to the steepness of the lot. So the further out you go, you, you start exceeding the height limit quite quickly. Um, so that's, that dictated the uh, design of the house being along that front uh, setback line. Um, the house is set depending on where you're at at the street, three to five feet below the actual street level. Um, and we've used low <coughs> sloped roofs to help uh, minimize the height um, and reduce any view impacts to, to the uphill neighbors. Um, with these characteristics, the property owner is elected to go with a somewhat of a mid-century modern type uh, architectural design 
uh, with stucco and cedar siding and with uh, large areas of glass that help uh, connect it to the uh, great views they have of the Pacific um, to the north. Uh, another key aspect in design was the creation of the, the level yard that I talked about by backfilling that area between the house and the widened end street. Um, since the great elevation at the front setback line, the front of the house is approximately 18 feet below the, the street elevation, the alternative would be to have a bridge for the driveway and a bridge for the walkway connecting it to there. Um, and we felt that <coughs> backfilling that and creating a level yard was just a much more uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, uh, situation. Um, and it also provides a usable outdoor space for the, the homeowner since the backyard is quite steep and it's, it's far from the uh, access to the house that it's highly um, not usable. Uh, in addition, it allows the story to have the perception as being one story from Olympian Way, um, which again, is a more pleasing aesthetic, and it also goes better with the uh, architectural style that they've chosen. Um, lastly, I wanted to address the uh, heritage tree that is uh, being proposed to be removed. Um, it doesn't sit within the footprint of the house. We've kept the house pretty narrow up to the uh, setback line, but it is in such a location that no matter what, uh, we're gonna be under the, dri the drip line of the tree, well into that. Um, and one, another option or another item that the arborist mentioned in his report is that uh, these trees don't uh, fare well when you disturb their root system, especially as significantly as will be required for the project. Um, so that was one of the factors uh, he, he mentioned. Um, we're also in the middle of the downhill, the back part of the property, there's sort of a gully that's been formed over time from water. Um, and per the geotechnical report, um, they required that we kind of fix that. Um, and our, our, our hydrology and grading plan that uh, we've had done so far took that into account and has, has provided grading, which is also right at the base of the tree where that goalie is. Um, so that's another factor that uh, lends to the top heaviness, the, the susceptibility to, uh, to the disease that was mentioned earlier. Um, the applicant is aware of the condition and is totally on board with it. Um, their first inclination would be to plant uh, a coastal live oak. Um, which I, I believe is a, a favorable tree to the city arborist. Um, we don't have a final landscape plan as uh, will be resolved in the building permit stage, um, but his, their original intent is to potentially put a, a 15 gallon coastal live oak in the front yard to help uh, um, give back that greenery that, from the street view on Olympian that, that will be taken away by taking away the tree. Um, again, I thank you for your time tonight, and I'll be able to, I'll be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Brinkman. Actually, it uh, looks like we have a question for you right now. <laughs> Commissioner Clifford. Yeah, I don't wait long. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, th my first question is going to be, it's not so much the height of the retaining wall that I was interested in. Okay. It's, you, you've had a soils engineer out there already, I'm Cor assuming. Correct. And you've done bores. Do you have uh, any idea how deep the piers are going to have to be uh, t to support that? I didn't bring the soils report with me. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, we did discuss briefly with engineering about that. Um, so that they haven't been designed yet. I know the retaining walls. Um, and they're, they're, they're aware that we're going to provide that design at the next level. Um, I apologize, I, I didn't bring the report with me to, no, to answer that That's correctly. fine. It's generally uh, somewhere around 20 feet or uh, generally 20 feet or two bedrock, whichever comes first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, and in terms of the trees, um, the tree, <clears throat> um, would the applicant be open to having more than one tree to replace the? Uh, I, I did talk to him, and I 
you know, saw that that might be a possibility, and he was, they were open to that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, well, at this point, I'm going to, you, you, and just stay close. <laughs> yeah. uh, at this point, I'm going to open it up to the public to comment on this matter. If you wish to comment, you would fill out a card in the back and bring it up. You'd have three minutes to talk. I don't see any cards up here right now. I don't see any coming my way, so I'm going to close comment uh, on this and bring it back to the commission for deliberation. Chair, if, if you would uh, entertain uh, just a moment. Uh, in flipping through very quickly the geotechnical investigation provided for the project, I'm not seeing a uh, specific depth recommendation for the retaining walls, but the foundations are recommended uh, to extend at least 18 feet below the ground surface. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Clifford. Um, okay, I'm going to go uh, right to the trees because, uh, quite frankly, the tree is the only, only impediment uh, on, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I would really like, uh, in terms of regreening the, uh, the hillside, uh, I would like to see a, a three for one on that because uh, the trees they're proposing are going to be shorter anyway than the, than the Monterey Pines. Uh, and uh, it's just, I have watched that hillside out there on Pedro Point over the years and it used to be almost all trees and now it is very much not all trees uh, and I'd like to see some uh, you know thought put into putting more trees in uh, when you when you put a house back in so that's where I'm at on that thank you Commissioner Stevey I'm looking at packet page 40 and also packet page 41. I guess it's a little more obvious there. Um, facing the front door, it's the white graphic image of the house, um, multicolor. Facing the front door of the house, it's the right front corner of the home. It looks like, uh, I guess 41 shows a little better. It looks like there's a significant drop to the backyard. You knew you, you had said it was 18. I'm not sure that's the full 18 or what. Is there any sort of protection on that corner for do you see what I'm talking about I'll talk to Brian directly on that if that's possible is, is, is there any sort of protection am I viewing that incorrectly or is, is that just a drop to the ground say a, a kid just walked around ran around that corner and it's for bungee jumping no <laughs> <laughs> um, no that we we will get into a, a fence um, and railing design for that area for sure it, it won't it wouldn't be allowed to just be a straight drop. And, and roughly what is that drop? Uh, I believe it was 13 feet or so, the retaining wall there. Page, uh, pack of page 41. Yeah, okay. I, uh, about 14 feet for that retaining wall. Great. There. My question is for staff. Do, is there some sort of code regulation on, on unprotected drops there? Or something that's got to be in uh, in writing. Um, there is. Uh, I, my recollection, without having the code in front of me, is um, drops of 30 inches or more require a guardrail, and uh, the guardrail is typically required to be 42 inches in height. Sounds like the applicant is readily amenable to that. I'm curious if we need to. Uh, I hope I'm not overtaking the chair's jurisdiction here. Go ahead. I'm curious if we need to codify that or just good enough. Um, likely not. Uh, it's a building code requirement, and uh, provided that the railing was open work, as defined in the city's zoning standards, the um, fence could extend up to four feet in height. And so, uh, I believe that that's consistent. Thank you, Commissioner Neblin. Well, I just wanted to uh, share my agreement with uh, Commissioner Clifford's uh, perspective as to Condition 11 uh, and the conditions of approval. So the uh, I think three trees, uh, you know, sort of placed and uh, and in sort of sourced in terms of species, uh, subject to the approval of the planning director, is the, the right way to go. Otherwise, I've got no issues with at all with the uh, project. I'm ready to move forward with when everyone else is. I would agree with that as well. Uh, any other comments, Chair? Uh, if if I may, um, staff did have a suggestion uh, for two uh, clarifying additions to condition number 11 regarding the landscape plan um, as we're talking about replacement plantings 
staff would recommend adding a new 11 uh, point A reading any replacement tree plantings required for the heritage tree removal shall not themselves be removed without express written authorization by the planning director. This is uh, an attempt to get at um, any desire by a property owner to remove these trees uh, prior to them maturing and perhaps trying to prevent them from becoming heritage trees. That would you know, undercut the commission's intent with requiring the replanting. And then adding an 11 dot B, um, the final landscape plan shall include appropriate shrubs and or tree plantings on the low side of both retaining walls in the front setback and public right of way to soften their appearance to the satisfaction of the planning director. This is in consideration of deleting condition number two, uh, if that pleased the commission, uh, to help uh, with the aesthetics and softening the, the large mass and hard uh, appearance and surface of those retaining walls so close to the street, which may be visi visible from the public right of way. Thank you. I, I sure like the sound of that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, before I, I move on, I just want to uh, call the applicant up real quick to see what he thinks about the 3-1. I think they'll totally be, I, I don't think that's an issue. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Nevlin. Well, I'm ready to make a, a motion, uh, and I would want to move that the Planning Commission find the project is exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act and approve the Coastal Development P Permit CDP 39017 by adopting the attached resolution, including conditions of approval in Exhibit A with the noted uh, revisions to Exhibit A. I believe it was a deletion of Condition 2? Correct. And uh, as to Condition 11, rather than one tree of a, of a species and placement subject to approval by the planning director, three trees, uh, and also uh, subject to the addition of condition of approval 11A and 11B as set forth by uh, uh, Mr. Murdoch a few moments ago, um, and incorporating all maps and testimony into the record by reference. Commissioner Clifford. I'll second that motion. Uh, okay. We, uh, Commissioner Stegman, was that just a motion for a second? Second. All right. We've had a motion and two seconds. Let's vote. <laughs> And that passes <coughs> unanimously. Congratulations, you have an approved project. Um, anyone agree by the action of the Planning Commission as 10 calendar days to appeal the decision in writing to the City Council if any of the above actions are challenged in court? Issues which may be raised are limited to those raised in the public hearing. All right, uh, moving on to Commission communications. Uh, any of the commissioners have willing something to communicate? Commissioner Clifford. Uh, I want to report that, unfortunately, I was not able to go to the Library Advisory Committee at its, its most recent meeting. So I'm reporting that I have no report. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Commissioner Stegman. I, I looked through historically some of the historical, tr uh, excuse me, historical heritage tree decisions we've made, discussions we've made, and um, when they do come up, they seem to occupy a significant amount of time. Um, I wonder if it might be helpful if, if the, the city's arborist took a look and just put together a little library of whatever 10 trees the city recommends. It seems like the, uh, when, you walk, when you drive around and take a look at projects that we've replaced heritage trees with, in, in general, they're some of the same trees that we're removing for, for identical reasons. And if we were simply to a one-page document and get all these contractors on the same page, I think we might save a lot of time for us and a lot of time for staff and a lot of time for these contractors. Thanks. All right. I, had a, I just had a question for staff just to see um, if they knew anything about it. Uh, there's a shop open in Rockaway, Seaweed. It's a, a medicinal cannabis shop. And I'm just wondering, is that something that's already been gone through the legal process uh, that we've implemented, or is that just uh, I'm curious what the legality of that shop is right uh, now. So, so staff is aware that at uh, one point the uh, operator of that business was illegally selling cannabis products. Uh, I don't know uh, the date of the last inspection to verify that, but it is still the subject of an open code enforcement investigation. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stegnick. <laughs> Going back off Mr. Campbell's question, just asking what is the status of the marijuana licenses? Uh, we have identified four of those selected in the lottery um, that are being processed. We're currently determining the uh, degree of completeness of those applications and any missing application materials. Uh, for at least two of them, we have uh, draft letters of incompleteness. 
uh, and I expect that we'll have the other two relatively soon and get the applicants working on preparing the missing materials so that we can continue forward as quickly as possible. Do we have a target date when that might be complete and we might have four licensees? Uh, we're hoping to bring them to the commission uh, at the second meeting in August, but that's very tentative, uh, but we're trying to put that out there uh, as an enticement to uh, get quick responses to our incomplete letters and bring the businesses uh, and their permits as quickly as possible. And what will be the commission's input on these licensees when you bring them to us? Well, uh, you may recall that the uh, ordinance adopted by the city council has various findings that the commission has to make. In addition to the basic findings for a use permit, there are specific findings for all marijuana operations and then certain types of marijuana operations like retailers and manufacturers have additional specific findings. And so the commission will be hearing all of the evidence prepared by staff, uh, comments from the applicants and public comments and we'll weigh all of that evidence uh, to determine if it can make the findings for approval. Will they be subject to Coastal Commission appeal? Um, the marijuana use permits will not. Uh, <coughs> if coastal development permits are required, um, then those permits, depending on the locations of the business, may be subject to appeal. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rubenstein. Uh, where are the proposed locations for these four applicants? Um, there are currently two applications being processed um, in the West Chart Park neighborhood on Palmetto. Uh, and one in Rockaway Beach and one in the Pedro Point Shopping Center area. Okay, and at this point, we're not going to entertain any more uh, discussion of cannabis unless it's, uh, well, I think we're hitting the point where. We want to do agendize a conversation about it. We probably right, if we that. want to agendize it, and it's unfair to I know commissioners who might want to speak on it but I have a different question okay good <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to just breach the subject again I I'd like to s to hear from you guys about the what do you guys think about updating the general plan and if there's a kind of a, a vision to, to do that in the near future um, yeah my, my concern is that there's a lot of grant money out there uh, available for various projects and um, a lot of that those funds are only available to cities that have uh, updated general plans so i want to make sure that we're we're you know able to receive uh, eligible to see those grant funding um, so i just wanted to get an idea to see if a general plan update was was on the docket for uh in the near future sure i think um it's, it's easily recognized that our uh, general plan has a lot of miles on it. Uh, we still think it, <laughs> it, it has um, you know, great utility for us in a lot of the work that we do, but having updates uh, would be very much um, appreciated and useful for staff. Um, the city did go through a comprehensive general plan update process some years ago now, and uh, it was not brought forward for adoption. And uh, it's our hope that we'll be able to re-energize that process as we complete the local coastal plan update that's ongoing currently uh, because that is so closely married with the general plan it's the component you know the coastal zone component if you will of the general plan um, and for the non-coastal zone area we would have a very um, uh, dis disconnected uh, plan potentially with a very new and updated and modernized LCP without a uh, corresponding update to the general plan so it's our hope to use that process to breathe some new life into the update process is there a timeline that you could share? Uh, there's not currently. Okay. Um, those types of activities take a long time and they require a significant um, commitment and investment by the council uh, to make sure that uh, the resources and the energy and direction is there uh, to complete that. And um, we're, again, hoping that the LCP process will, will trigger that guidance from the council. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Nedlin? Yeah, I, I don't need to discuss now, but I, I remain really interested in sort of the ADUs, the additional dwelling units, and kind of how things are going. I know there was a lot of concern that was uh, uh, raised at the time that we um, uh, last had the matter before us for, for any sort of an action. And I'm very sort of curious about, you know, what the state of affairs is in terms of applications and, you know, impacts, if any, have been sort of observed, even anecdotally. Again, I, it, it's, you know, we could, I, we could agendize it for a, a brief you know, sort of update at some point or, uh, or what have you, but I, I just wanted to put a plug in for that. Sure, thank you. No, I'd agree, that'd be really interesting yeah. to get an update. 
Okay, I do not see any more light. Staff communication. Nothing to report, thank you. All right, we've come to that time. Commissioner Clifford. I move that we adjourn. Got a motion. I'll second the motion. <laughs> we had a motion, a second, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thank you, the meeting is now over. Thanks.